Hi everyone, welcome to Archway Academy's 13th annual luncheon. We are live here in the studio. Really excited to have you guys with us here today. My name's Sasha Coles. I'm the executive director of Archway Academy. I'm here with John Flournoy, who's our luncheon chair. We are extremely grateful that you are here with us today eating at your computer. This year looks a little different. Because of COVID, we were expecting to be at the River Oaks Country Club. Instead, we are here in studio with you, but we cannot thank you enough for spending an hour of time with us here today. Archway Academy has been around since 2013. We opened our doors to students January 2014, and we're the largest recovery high school in the country. Our mission is to make sure that students in recovery have high quality education where both their recovery and their education is nurtured. We couldn't do that important work without our amazing partners. Palmer Memorial Episcopal Church is our space partner. Southwest Schools is our academic partner and we owe so much of our success to these dynamic partners. I want to take a second to, um, we are such a hidden gem in the Houston community, so I want to take a second to um, encourage you to help us spread the word about who we are through social media. Please check in at this event on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, spread the message of our website, archwayacademy.org. When you post, hashtag Archway Academy Luncheon, anything you can to do to help us spread the word about what Archway Academy is doing, our important mission, and the lives that we're transforming. So thank you again for being here today, and thank you, John, for chairing our event this year. Absolutely, it's our pleasure. Uh, more importantly, thank you and your amazing team for all that you've done to pull this together. It's been a true, true feat and some really unique times. Um, I, I will say, Sasha, that when Mary Austell and I signed up to chair this event, I didn't know that a prerequisite was going to be to wear makeup, but you I, look feel, fantastic. I feel like it really works for me, to be honest. I, I kind of like it. Uh, no, on a, on, a, on a more serious note, we have a great program ahead of us today. Uh, I have been on the Archway Academy board for the last nine years and have been in active recovery from alcoholism and drug addiction for 12. Uh, it has been an incredible honor to have been on the Archway board, uh, one that I will always cherish in my life. Um, from firsthand experience, I know how difficult it is to enter the world of recovery, to be faced with that difficult challenge. Um, it's not easy. I got sober as an adult. And think about today having to get sober as an adolescent in a normal high school surrounded by bullying, peer pressure, mm -hmm. image issues. It's almost an impossible task to imagine that you can do successfully. A school like Archway makes sense, and it's why Mary Austell and I have chosen to support Archway in a number of different ways. And we'll continue to do it through the rest of our lives. Um, so we're very excited to be here today and to be the chairs and for you to be out there watching this event unfold. It's gonna be a truly awesome experience. A couple of housekeeping items. So what are we gonna do today? Uh, one, we're gonna be listening to a Texas legend, a baseball legend and a person in active recovery, Jeff Bagwell. Uh, two, we're gonna be hearing from four amazing alums and how Archway Academy impacted their lives. Three, we're here to raise money. Um, there's gonna be a couple ways to do that throughout the program. On the top right of your screen, there's gonna be a donate button. Go ahead and click it. Learn how to donate, and as you go through the process today, if you feel inclined, please donate to Archway Academy. Another is behind you on the screen. You can text STUDENT to 9199. Uh, the other is we have two awesome auction items. If you scroll down just a little bit on your screen, you'll see that we are doing a dinner for two with Jeff and Rachel Bagwell at Patente Restaurant at the Chef's Table and an Astros package that includes four amazing seats and a behind the scenes tour of Minute Maid Park, plus four signed baseball caps from Jeff Bagwell. 
So now we're on to our introduction of Jeff. We are thrilled to have this Houston and national sports legend join us today. He is in the Hall of Fame, but also a grateful recovering alcoholic. So without further ado, let's watch this video of Jeff Bagwell and Archway Academy board member, Randy Lack. First of all, Jeff, on behalf of Archway and the board, this is really an incredible um, opportunity to talk to you about your story. And, um, you know, the first thing, we're all here to support um, the kids in recovery. Archway is a program. We all know and have been told how incredible uh, the program is, but really today is an opportunity for you to uh, live out loud, to tell us a little about your story and why you're here today to just share. So I, I just want to give you an opportunity to kind of talk a little bit about your background, what's happened, and what got you to this seat today. Well, I am Jeff, and I am an alcoholic. Um, you know, I. And addiction, whether it's drugs or alcohol, is a, uh, it is just a challenge, put it that way. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. Um, to have no control over yourself, um, where alcohol for me controlled my life, where wake up from the morning to whenever I went to sleep, it was all about where was my next drink. Um, and to think about that, uh, it's, you know, we talk about baffling and cunning the disease and you can't, it's hard to explain to people what your life looks like. Uh, they can see what it looks like and generally the whole thing is, well, you need willpower. Um, you should just be able to stop. It's just not the way it works. Uh, and it's a constant struggle. Um, and you know, I think at times you lose hope, you know, and you just, I, I think you value, you don't value your life anymore. I mean, I remember looking in the mirror in the morning at seven o'clock in the morning and saying, what are you doing, man? You're killing yourself. And still could not stop. Uh, because for me to get through the day, I had to have drinks. Uh, it's a very vicious cycle. And, but it's something that it went through in my life that is, I, I can honestly say that Obviously, we never overcome this disease. People say, oh, you're a recovered alcoholic? No, 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 I'm in recovery. I mean, it's always there, and it's always waiting. And, and for me, I was very, very fortunate to have people around me that loved me and supported me and didn't give up on me. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I'm here today, because if they did give up on me, I don't think I'd be sitting here or in any other seat. <laughs> I would not be alive. So when we talk about Archway, I led a meeting, uh, a Monday meeting and a night meeting, which, you know, generally my meetings are kind of controlled. I know who's in the rooms and all that kind of stuff. And this was kind of like my first time to step out. Um, and I went to this meeting and I saw about 10 to 15 kids on the side wall. And I'm leading this meeting and my whole focus was on these kids. And I'm thinking about how hard it was for me at that particular time to be in that seat to be sober to think of what it could be like for these kids. To, t to try and tell kids about sobriety in my life, and yet they haven't even barely started theirs. Uh, it was something that was very, very um, impactful for me. And, and since then, I, I've, always, I've always gone around trying to figure out, and I've asked other people, what do you say to young kids? Like, they come up and they look at you, and they're like, what are you doing here? Like, you're Jeff Bagwell. I'm like, yeah, and I have the same problems you got. <laughs> Um, but what do you say to those kids? I mean, I've lived half my life, um, and the struggles that I had can imagine putting it on a 15, 16, 17, and so on. And I was just, it was just something that meant something to me, where it was, how do these kids do that? And what do you say to them? You know, and I, I think for me, my whole, I think what I found out is the best thing is, first I say, well, how's your life treating you right now? Uh, and to every single one of those kids, it was not good. Um, and you know, I, I don't know, those kids could have been there court appointed, they could have, their parents could have just dropped them off there, whatever, but they were there. Um, and I think the biggest thing we want to give the kids is hope. And you know, for all the things that we go through in life, when you're in addiction, the hope is gone. 
Like, this is who I am, this is my life. Um, and that's where Archway comes in for me. I'm thinking of these kids that have an opportunity to go to a high school with the kids that are their same age, the same struggles, the same stories, uh, and what an opportunity it would be for those kids. And that's basically why I'm here for Archway. And it, it helps me too, because I feel and I empathize with their struggle. And I can't imagine at that age. So if we give these kids, these parents, an opportunity for a kid to get better and to understand what this is all about, and you can still live a normal life. And it probably, you know, might not be right now, but down the road, they're gonna tell you that it's the best life they've ever lived. Yeah, I remember when we were together, um, you had just joined the board, and um, one of the things that we did was the walk the line, right? So one of the things we do is where it's sort of the commonality with the other teachers, with the other board members and the children. And I, I know that was so impactful to you. you. Will you share a little bit about that? Yeah, that was probably maybe one of the most singular um, important things that happened to me and what Archway, when I went to that, I guess it was kind of a day retreat, yeah. Um, and to watch Sasha talk about, you know, have you ever done this? Have you ever done this? So I walk back and forth from the line and I'm kind of just watching. And then she says, have you ever tried to commit suicide across the line? And it, say there was six, 70, peop 70 kids there, at least 65 crossed that line. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, damn. Um, you know, I understand it, you know, and I've heard about it and people, like I said before, lose hope. And these kids, they've lost hope. Uh, or they just don't know enough about the disease. And to watch them walk across that line to think that they've tried to kill themselves, um, that is something that really scares me. Um, because I know, like I said earlier, we, t we look at our life and when we're in addiction as meaningless. And these kids are thinking that their life is meaning meaningless enough to take their own life. Uh, and Archway's doing something about that. So that was very impactful for me. I, I watched your Hall of Fame ceremony. And, and to me, the thing that stood out is, to a man, everybody that talked about you said, greatest teammate. And then in your speech, you said, all I want to do is be the greatest teammate. And I feel like that box is absolutely checked, right? That's what everybody says about you. And now, the, you know, the ability to, to spread that message uh, of recovery and hope is a second act that could be even better. The ability to be a, a teammate to everybody in recovery. And I know you are that because I know the people that surround you and love you. And, um, you know, I just want to hear a little bit about your childhood. I'm, in your speech, the thing that touched me the mo most was that moment you had with your dad. You know, I had a great childhood, I think. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't look back and say, oh my God, I had a tough childhood. Um, which is another reason, like my message to people is it doesn't matter who you are and what you're, you know, you're, people have childhood, they grow up with alcoholism in their family. Um, my kids can talk about their childhood with me as right. the alcoholic, but everything was fine. You know, my parents, they were at every game. They took me everywhere I needed to go. Wonderful parents. My father was a, uh, he was a tough dad but I could handle that. It, it drove me. Um, and my father, um, he's old school. And you know, I take a little bit of my dad with me as a parent, trying to sift out a little bit of the harshness. But I'm not, I'm not saying in any way was he a bad dad. He was wonderful. Um, he was just tough. Um, but it was cool. And so it, didn't, it really didn't matter to me of I, I, something to blame alcoholism on, like my parents or my upbringing or anything like that. It's just, that's what, what, what I am. You know, in, in, in that Hall of Fame speech, like I said earlier, I, I'm not sober without that, without my parents, without my wife, without my kids pulling for me. Other people in the program that wouldn't give up on me. Um, and so I look at myself as, as very lucky and extremely grateful because it could have been a lot worse as bad as it was, it could have been a lot worse. I know you were sober at your Hall of Fame speech. Yeah. And um, having that experience without the guilt, the shame, the secrets, and being able to enjoy it, what was, what was that moment like? 
you know, I was sober at that, but it, it was a long stretch up till that. Um, and I drank after that at some point too, until this last time in 10, 17, 17. Um, but to have, to have the ability to think and to put a sentence together and to think, thank the people that have really been there for me, I mean, that's such a gift. Um, and I feel if I did the speech again today, I would be better because I have more sobriety. Um, but to put it together and to be able to go through that sober was, was wonderful. So growing up, like, who were, the, who were the heroes? Well, my father was a huge Ted Williams fan. We're, we're Red Sox fans because uh, we're all from Boston. And then I became a, a Kari Ostremski fan. So he was kind of my guy. He wasn't the biggest guy in the world. He was always changing his batting stance. He was, he was just a hard worker. So I always loved Carl Yastrzemski. Um, and those were, you know, back when you were a kid back then, your athletes became your idols. But that being said, you know, part of my Hall of Fame speech too was, if I brought anything for a family to sit down in front of the TV and to talk about baseball, to talk about whether they, Bagwell stinks or Bagwell's great, whatever it might be, it brought families together, then I did my job. And, I, and I'm proud of that and I'm happy because that's what my life was. It was my dad and me watching the Red Sox on some fuzzy TV that I'd have to jump on the roof, mess with the antenna to make sure he could get you know, channel six to watch the Red Sox. But those are times I'll never forget. That's awesome. Who are your heroes today? Recovering alcoholics. And people would probably say, oh, no, he's just saying that because he's on this video. That is not true. I'm saying that because they are. Uh, I've seen people in this program go through some horrific things and remain sober. The people that are in AA and recovery are some of the most genuine people that you could ever meet. Um, where else can you go somewhere where every single person in the room, no matter where they're from, no matter what color they are, only wants you to stay sober. That's all they care about. It's, it's such an amazing feeling to have people that care. And they don't even barely know you. And it's not because I'm Jeff Bagwell, the Astros. It's everybody. Everybody cares about everybody. And when I watch people, you know, their wives commit suicide or mm -hmm. people die that are their closest to them or anything and they remain sober, I'm like, damn, man. I mean, that's like the hardest thing in the world to think about going through. And they stayed with it. And, they're, and you know what they're doing? They're talking to me about me. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. How you, I mean, it's just, it, it's so impressive and it's such a, a shining light on a human being to watch people care about each other. I just, it, I've, I've always said this, if every single person in the world went to a couple of AA meetings, the world would be a better place. Yeah. I, I've known you a while and I've, I've heard the stories about, you know, the guys showing up at your door again. Um, can you talk a little bit about that, just, just picking yourself back up? And what, what was that, that moment, that last moment, that last experience that flipped that yeah. switch for you? The only thing I can tell you is God, because I had a, basically a family intervention again. Um, my kids said, I can't do, we can't do this no more, Dad. And my wife said it, but they've done that before. And for some reason, it worked for now. I can't say that I never drink again because I've told that to my kids before and I broke that promise. But for today, I'm not drinking. And the only way thing I can think of is that was God. And God said, all right, man, I've given you enough chances. Um, it's time. I think it's part of God's purpose. It's for me to do stuff like this, to spread the word and to show people that it doesn't matter who you are, that this, this is real and it's not a I, it can't, it's not the back of my baseball card and it's not money. I can't buy my way out of any of this stuff. I got to put in the work and, and thankfully for me, I have a love and support of a lot of people. Yeah, and I know you've been on the other side of it. Can you share a little bit about, you know, seeing addiction and in, in friends and, in, 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 you know, surrounding you even before your own? Yeah, I think though, before, well, yeah, Ken Caminiti, um, who passed away, um, he overdosed. I saw his addiction, but I didn't know anything about it. You know, I think being in addiction and being an alcoholic, I mean, and I guess you could use those two words together or whatever you want to use them by. Um, unless, I think society today is starting to come to grips that it, it is real. It's not the guy on the side of the road all the time. Yeah, it's him, 
but it's also us. I mean, it doesn't choose who it is. So I watched Cammy go through this, but I didn't know enough about it to help. Like, I'd give anything for Cammy to have to go through that now with me so we could do it together because we get sober. Um, it's kind of like Archway. Kids have we. We have a whole program of kids wanting for everybody to be sober. Yeah, and, it, and, it's, and I said this early on, but it, it's a big decision to be such a big figure in the community and to not just tell your story, but to broadcast it. I mean, that, that's, that's a big decision. It's a lot of responsibility. You know, what, what got you to the point where you were willing to share openly about what you've been through? Because I know me speaking about it means a lot because there is the stigma of an addict or an, an alcohol. And I want people to understand it's real. It doesn't matter. You know, you might, you might think that it's only these certain peoples, you just don't know. There's a lot of us around. <laughs> For sure. Even some that don't wanna be one of us. Um, but we don't choose it, it chooses us. And I want people to know that it's okay and there's hope and we, you, can, you can survive this. If you do it and live by not drinking or, or doing drugs or whatever, you can live the best life you've ever had. Um, and I can't, it's, it's hard to explain when you say, I, I walk around with no baggage. Um, my life is an open book and I'm okay with that. I, I, I am who I am and my past is what it is. But all I can do now is go forward. Um, and that's the message. It, there's hope, you, you, you can go forward. But if you continue on the path that you're on, there is no hope. It's an incredible story. So when you're in your, when you're in your quiet moments, what do you pray for today? I generally pray for everybody besides me. Um, I pray for my kids. I pray for health, um, safety. I pray for others who struggle with this disease, that they can find God. And most important, I thank God for his grace for giving me the chance to do this. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this. Uh, and I, as I told you before, me getting sober this last time is only a God thing. I thank him because um, it could have went a different way. So I owe him. And if I, look at, uh, if I look at my life and I think that if everybody looks at their life, like us in recovery, I don't think God's let us down. He's given us an opportunity. And then it's up to us, us to, to do action and, and to stay sober and spread the message. I mean, the, the gift of the legacy that you can create is, is such a gift and the impact um, that you can have in your, in your message. Um, the, the two, I kind of want to split up for a second. In baseball, um, when you think about that, that moment, what, what was that moment in your career that you reflect on you know, biggest smile, biggest moment, maybe something people don't think about, about you. Daryl Kyle's no hitter. I've never been so happy for another teammate than I was that day. Um, making it to the playoffs in 97 was great, team thing. Craig Biggio's 3,000 hit was magical, and I cried, and it wasn't even, I just, I was, I was so happy for him because I know it meant so much to him. Things like that the team-oriented thing or the individual besides myself. Like, oh, what's the biggest home run you ever? I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm just doing my thing. But when, you, when, you, when you're doing something and you watch other people being successful, that is the most gratifying thing, which I'm not saying this just for this interview. That's what spreading the message is, is when you see it work in somebody else. Um, that's why they're my heroes, because they fight. Yeah, and you have an incredible legacy being enshrined now in the Hall of Fame, but when, I, I, I know you differently. I, I know the humble, quiet, shy Jeff. Um, and, and now when you look ahead, you know, what do you want your life going forward to be remembered by? I think it's more that he helped others, that he changed his life around to do something positive and it had nothing to do with baseball. Baseball might have given me a platform, um, and that's all part of the story, but that's not the ending, end result. That was, that's just my platform, that people recognize me through that. Um, I want to be a guy that, that just didn't sit back and 
say, okay, I'm sober and I'm just going to leave this alone. To understand that going to a meeting has nothing to do about me personally, but it might make somebody else who is on the fence of whether or not to drink, to see me in there and to speak and sit there and go, man, if he can do this, then I should be able to. And to tell people, it doesn't matter what I did for a living. This is real. This is every human being. Can, anybody can get this thing. And you don't know if you, you know, you don't wake up, you know, you don't start at like 12 and your parents go, just want to let you know you're going to become an alcoholic. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, it's not something we try, and it, it, but that's the cards that are dealt to us. And how do, what do we do about that? I mean, all we try and do is help others. Um, that's why the kids are so important to me is because can you imagine being that age and, you know, you, you do your thing, you do your drugs, drink all that kind of stuff, but to think about, I might have to not do this for the rest of my life. How do I survive that? It's overwhelming. Even as an adult, it's overwhelming. When I was 40 years, 42 years old, I'm like, you're going to tell me I can't drink for the rest of my life? You ain't telling me that. I'll stop for a few months. That's not the way it works. <laughs> and I, you know, I, I just think that the hope and the, you know, when, when you first get into recovery, you hear, I'm a grateful alcoholic. Those are the two craziest things you could possibly ever hear when you first walk in. You're going to tell me you're grateful to be in here. I get it now because I am grateful alcoholic. That's great. And so um, when you think about Archway, the one thing I think about is the parents, the parent struggle, and um, what we really focus on is raising the awareness of Archway. So on behalf of the Archway board, uh, thank you for stepping up. Um, and, and this is just an incredible moment. I just want you to, to maybe share a, a last thought about, um, to those listening, to those watching today, some of your experience you know, we talk about me and people want to hear that stuff and all that. But for me, you know me, I, I don't, I could care less about talking about me. Um, what I care about is Archway. I think as a parent, when your son or daughter is 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, you start to see signs of, you know, you get in trouble, oh, they get drunk, they come home, you get in trouble and all that kind of stuff. Then when it becomes, the addiction re rears its head. Um, parents don't know what to do. I see parents getting mad, embarrassed, um, and most importantly, confused. They don't know what to do. I've seen people send kids away, like, go away, um, or just, you're a bad kid. No, they're not a bad kid. They're struggling with this disease that is awful, and they can't control it. So what do you do as a parent? Well, Archway Academy gives you a chance to have your kids still around to send them to a school where there's other kids going through the same situation. You know, when, when I told you earlier about, you know, 65 out of those 70 kids walk a line about committing suicide, you don't think their parents know they committed suicide, trying to commit suicide? They're scared to death. But we at Archway can give them hope. They can give them a, a normal life. Archway is a we program. We're all in this together because we've all been there. That is such a powerful thing to have when you know you got somebody to count on. And Archway gives you that. And you can, you can live a normal life. And yeah, there's gonna be struggles when you get out of school and all that. But it gives you an opportunity to start to understand who you are, what the addiction is, the points of, that get you to you know, act on your addiction. Um, I just think it's just a beautiful thing because I think at the end of the day, the kid's scared. He might not act like he's scared. He might act rebellious and all that, but he's scared. You know, he, you know in certain moments where you black out or say you OD, all those kind of things. Archway gives you an opportunity for you have a schedule, accountability to who you, what you need to do as a kid. And you ain't gonna fool anybody at Archway. We get it. You know, we've been there. All the things that you think you can get away with, we've tried too. Uh, and at the end of the day is, you can't run away from this disease. You gotta, you gotta meet it head on. And I think Archway gives those kids a great opportunity to do that. Yeah, the love from the teachers, the love from the other kids. I mean, you saw that it was the same thing around when we were there for the um, or the uh, Archway board retreat to watch those kids hugging each love other, love each yeah. other, hugging on each other. I mean, it, I, I can't tell you what an impact Archway has made on me and how this thing is run with Sasha and the board. How, how much they care. 
But when you go through something like this with a kid that has this, it's, it's really, it's, it's a life or death thing. Like I said, 65 ran across. Could have been 65 that actually succeeded. Um, that's frightening. Yeah. Love you, Jeff. I'm proud Love of you. too. Appreciate it, brother. It was a great job today. Okay, thanks. thanks for joining us. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was awesome. So when I watched that video purposefully for the first time uh, last night, uh, I was blown away by its rawness. I mean, it, it gave me goosebumps watching it. Uh, and then today, what I picked up on additionally was the wisdom that Jeff has uh, gathered through this process of recovery. He is, whether he's going to give himself credit or not, um, extremely talented in this regards as well. It's It's more than just baseball, and it's a parent that his work in the recovery community is going to be um, lasting. So such a special thanks to Jeff. Another thing that I did uh, in researching Jeff was I went to uh, Wikipedia, right? And everybody wants to get some wiki information just to look at Jeff's accolades. Um, and it was obvious, I'm like, hey, Jeff's been in the Hall of Fame. Hey, he's won a unanimous MVP. He's got gold gloves. He has silver slugger awards. Uh, there was one item that stuck out to me. Uh, in, in high school, he won an award uh, up at Xavier High School in the Northeast for character and generosity. Um, and I think we've seen that today in what Jeff has done uh, for Archway and so thank you Jeff and thank you Randy for that truly amazing interview. Uh, so we wanted to give some fundraising updates. Uh, during the, the Jeff Bagwell segment we raised over $14,000 which to be honest I was nervous about. It is amazing. It put a smile on my face when that flashed up on the screen here. So great work. Uh, still a little ways to go to hit our goal of $300,000 but I know we can do it. Um, don't forget about the silent auction items uh, as you scroll down to the bottom of your event page. So let's hit that $300,000 goal. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. And another way you can do that is by texting STUDENT to 91999. And we heard a little, a little something special that this month Jeff celebrated three years of long-term recovery. So congrats, Bagwell. We're super excited to have you keynote speaking an event in such an important month for you. Now we're going to take a turn uh, to hear from some alumni students. One of my favorite people of all time, one of our alumni students, Erica, uh, she attended Archway for two years before she graduated. Her story is powerful, kind of overwhelming. I remember the first time I met Erica when she came to tour with her probation officer. Um, hearing the story, the words that came out of her mouth about what she's experienced in her past, um, some things I don't know that a lot of people are able to overcome. Erica is a beautiful example of the transformation that can happen when a young person puts their mind to recovery. Enjoy meeting Erica. Hi, I'm Erica and I graduated Archway in 2017. Right before I came to Archway, I had been released from a juvenile detention facility. Back when I was going through all those things, I remember feeling very like lost and insecure about myself. I guess I was seeking acceptance and love from people from the wrong crowd. I remember the first time that I met everybody at Archway on my tour. Everybody was just so welcoming and just had such a big smile and they were just so kind. I learned way more at Archway than I've learned at any other school and I only went to Archway for like two years. Not only were the teachers teachers, they were kind of like mentors in a way and super supportive. It's, I felt like I could trust the teachers. I always believed that I was capable of getting my diploma and completing school and going to college, but I guess there was a little bit of doubt. I recall when I got my diploma, I was super happy. Graduation at Archway was beautiful. I think looking back, it just makes me so happy. 
Right now, I'm taking classes at HCC and I'm a government major. So I was able to go to Archway on a scholarship, so I'm super grateful for those who donate. I think my favorite memories from Archway would be the morning check-ins and the Friday fill-ups. I think morning check-ins were just such a great start to my day because I was able to hear hear my peers share and also share about how I'm feeling prior to going into school. So it was just a nice way to vent and get things off of my chest. I remember one of my favorite random acts of kindness was doing the affirmation cards. I remember just walking up to people and giving them and just watch, watching their face expression as they opened the no and just their smile. I mean, truthfully, I don't know where I'd be without Archway. I just know it wouldn't be a good place. I don't, I feel like I wouldn't have accomplished so much or even have been able to graduate had it not been for Archway. I think the support that I got there and just being in such a positive and uplifting environment like that just really was able to get me through my education. I mean, if I had advice for any young girl, it would pretty much be to really seek supportive people, uplifting people, and really just work on herself, I think. The world's pretty ugly, especially for girls, especially for young girls. So I think just working on yourself and just seeking positive people is the most important thing. All right, so <laughs> I cry every year at the luncheon, but I'm <laughs> sitting here in a live studio just sobbing, trying not to have everything come out of my nose. Um, <laughs> thank you to Erica. I know she's watching live right now. I'm so proud of her. I'm so proud of what she's accomplished, of what she's accomplished in her life. And she's just a beautiful model for the transformation that can happen when a student um, turns their life over to recovery. Sorry, y'all. Woo, man. So, um, 70% of students that attend Archway are on scholarship for their program fees, just like Erica. And so your participation in our luncheon today is really, really important. Erica spoke at one of our luncheons four years ago and um, some people approached her afterwards. It's actually a board member and his wife who want to remain anonymous. And they went up to her and told her that they'd continue to support her education because they really believed in what she was doing. So these two incredible people have continued funding her education. They've paid for all of her HCC classes. And to me, that just represents the power of community that happens when, when people seek recovery. Um, the light that comes on, not just for Erica, but for people who have been touched by who she is and her story, um, she continues to touch me, as you can tell. <laughs> so just a reminder to please text STUDENT to 91999 to support us. And in addition, we have another important event that's going on right now. It's called um, Art of Recovery. It's an online event that showcases over 30 artists in recovery, some incredible pieces of art. You can check that out by scrolling around on the event page by looking through our stuff on social media. Um, it'll be live until October 23rd. So if you get a chance, please check that out. And I'm going to turn it over to John so I can kind of get myself together. <laughs> well, it's a it's a good opportunity to say thank you to Sasha. You do amazing work for Archway Academy and your passion for the students. Um, we've all seen Sasha cry a number of times, but uh, it is every time merited and she gives her heart and soul to this school. So we are very grateful for you. Thank you. Um, quick update uh, on the fundraising. So. We're going to do a quick auction highlight, and it's the Dinner for Two with Jeff and Rachel Bagwell at Patente. Patente is a, a new Italian food restaurant uh, across from Minute Maid Park, owned by the Houston uh, Astros owner, Jim Crane. Um, it's a, a table for four. There'll be two people and then Jeff and, and Rachel uh, at the chef's table. So there'll be a special menu prepared. Uh, truly a, a once in a lifetime opportunity to sit down with a Hall of Famer, um, a person in active recovery, to ask questions about his life. Um, so please 
uh, go down and bid on the dinner. It's going to be a, a really fantastic evening for whoever wins, wins it. Um, I have the privilege of introducing our next alum, Andrew. Andrew is, uh, he graduated from Archway Academy in 2010. And oh, actually, I think this one's Austin. This oh, yeah, it is. Austin. It is Austin. Sorry. My, my bad. I had scrolled down too far on my, That's my board live here. Live TV. So, here we go. All right. Next one is Austin. Austin, we look forward to seeing your video. My name is Austin, and I graduated Archway in 2015. So one of the lower points that led me to recovery is when I was 17, um, I had just turned 17, so in Texas that's an adult, so I could have been tried as an adult, and I got into a car accident with a 75-year-old man um, in which his car was flipped upside down, um, mine was shot into a ditch, and I remember immediately panicking, oh shit, I'm 17, I'm going to prison, um, and at that point I didn't know what to do. So I remember before I got into recovery and I got sober, there was a lot of things that I thought about myself. Like, I was extremely insecure about anything, about the way I looked, the way I sounded. I always felt like the odd man out. And then getting sober, like the thoughts on my, like the transition wasn't overnight, but like I could look at myself and say, I can work on these things. Like the things that I'm insecure about, like I have control over in most aspects. I remember the very first time I came to Archway when I came to visit, um, and it was definitely like a family environment. Like I showed up and the teachers and the kids were joking around and the support staff and everybody was having fun. I had showed up during a Friday, so it was what they called Friday fill up. So everybody was literally just having fun. Like music was being blared. Like the counselors were dancing more than the students were. It was like a very confusing environment. Um, and as somebody who was like about to be exiting out of treatment, I had no idea what I was getting into. Like absolutely no idea. Like I was told I was going to visit a high school. And from what I could tell, this wasn't a high school. Our toy graduation was very interesting, but it was awesome. Cause it was like, I was graduating. I wasn't supposed to graduate. I wasn't supposed to make it to 18. So my relationship with my family today is very different from when I got sober. Um, my mom kind of grew up as a single mom raising me, and during my addiction, I took advantage of that. Because I was like, you're having to complete the job of two parents, so you have half the time to watch me, so I have double the time to take advantage of that. And my relationship with my dad, like, before I was sober, was that I would say of like an employer to an employee. Like he would tell me certain things I needed to do in order to kind of get what I wanted. Um, and I just followed that to a T. And then one day I woke up and I didn't care anymore. But now to this day, like me and my mom, she'll call me for advice and that's weird. Like she'll call me saying like, hey, I've been going through this, like what do I do? And it's not that she's looking for me for all the answers, like it's not that kind of pressure. But it's like, I bring stuff to the table now. Like, I know what to, like, I can help. Let me be of service. Like, where do you need me? Um, and with my dad, like, I showed up to his house, made amends. Two days later, he died in a plane crash. And it was like, that wasn't obviously, like, ideal. It's not what I wanted. But I got to leave that situation knowing, like, you got to see who I always wanted to show you. Had I not been the, presented with the opportunity to go to Archway and get that way of recovery, I firmly believe one of two things. I would have never graduated high school. I probably would have substituted with a GED or something. Um, and well, I guess they both lead to the same. I'd most likely be dead, considering before I got sober, I was like shooting heroin. And the active life expectancy for somebody shooting heroin is three months. Um, and that was five years ago. So I firmly believe that I wouldn't be here. Um, and so for that, I'm forever grateful because it's like, had I not gotten Archway, Archway was the stepping stone into everything else I've received in recovery. One of the things I love about Austin's story is when he talks about how getting into recovery was part of what turned the light bulb on for him for his education. 
And then the part about the repair with his family, you know, the, the damage that happens in addiction and the repair that can happen in recovery, you know, him being able to make amends to his dad and be at peace with his father before the tragic passing that happened. Um, thank you, Austin, for sharing your story with us. 77% of the students that uh, were at Archway last year either maintained total abstinence from drugs and alcohol during the school year or had a, had a relapse but were honest with us about the relapse. So um, we're forever grateful for the hard work that our young people are doing to maintain sobriety every day while focusing on their education. So just a reminder to you guys, please continue supporting us through your donations. Please text STUDENT to 91999 and let's keep this really great momentum going that we're already seeing with our fundraising today. Okay, so the next silent auction item that we're going to plug right now are the Astros tickets. Uh, four Astros tickets. I'm sure they're going to be amazing seats and uh, a behind the scenes tour of Minute Maid Park. Uh, with that, you are going to get four, 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 yeah, four Jeff Bagwell signed hats. So go ahead and go down to the bottom of your event page and uh, bid on, on those items. We sure do appreciate your support. Uh, Jump the gun earlier on Andrew. So Andrew is a really amazing guy and I unfortunately didn't know the other students on this video so I was uh, on those videos so I was anxious to talk about Andrew. Um, Andrew has been uh, with Archway now for about the last six years in the, his current capacity on staff as a recovery coach but he's also an Archway alum. Uh, he graduated from Archway Academy in 2010 and seeing his growth from being at Texas Tech to where he is today is uh, one that warms my heart. So enjoy this video of Andrew. My name is Andrew. I graduated from Archway in 2010 and I have 11 years sober. So prior to attending Archway, um, I was, to say I was struggling in school would be an understatement. Um, I wasn't showing up consistently. My grades were failing, if not non-existent, due to my absences my excessive absences. Um, and what happens when school starts to go down the drain is my relationships with my family went down the drain. So my mom and I were arguing, my dad and I were arguing, and they really had no idea what to do. My substance use disorder had, and all the negative consequences that went with that were pretty significant. Um, I had been arrested twice as an adult, and one of those arrests was a pending felony and that really got everyone's attention. I had gotten kicked out of, at this point, three high schools. And those are all external things, right? Anyone with a, with a sheet of paper with kind of what I've done can see, oh man, there's some chaos here, there's some um, uncertainty here. But really, inside, I felt it. Um, I knew that I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin, and I knew that I had tremendous anxiety about what I was gonna do. What I remember, about meeting the Archway team for the first time was that Sasha and the other recovery coaches and the teachers were friendly, they were outgoing, and I felt like a person, I felt like an individual. Whereas my experience at my previous four high schools was that I was just a number, I was just a body. After graduating from Archway, I attended Texas Tech University and was a part of their collegiate recovery community. And about three and a half years in, about a year prior to when I was supposed to graduate from Texas Tech, Sasha gave me a call and said, hey, um, there's this opening here at Archway. Uh, one of the recovery coaches is gonna be at our new Woodlands campus and we need someone to take that place. Can you, can you graduate in time? I did it, I graduated on time and was able to come back to Archway and be a staff member. The community at Archway, the fellowship we have is, is unique. Part of that has to do with our size, right? We have the luxury of being a smaller school, whereas a high school with a thousand kids, it's probably difficult to create that fellowship in that community. But it's so much more than that. You can have a high school with a hundred kids and it not feel all that great and not feel all that welcoming. Archway has teachers and students and, and our students graduate from high school and we do college prep and, and all the things that a traditional high school does. We've talked about the fellowship and we've talked about these bond that, that students build with, with teachers and with staff. We really have a team 
between the district and the Archway Board and the Archway Recovery Coaches and the administrative team, we really have worked well with each other and have trained each other on how to best approach students like me, how to best approach our students. Those students that I worked well with and that I could see taking advantage of all the resources and creating some of that fire and building up enthusiasm and motivation, I could see the light turn on. You don't have to hang around Archway all that long to see that happen. You, I mean, you, within a week, you can see a kid go from just miserable to, to just an, amazing. Another reason that I think Archway functions so well and, and does so well for the students that attend is because we work in collaboration with the larger recovery community. You can feel this movement, you can feel this community, and, and Archway taps into that. And without that, I don't think we would function as well. But because we are able to work well with everyone, um, it really creates just this, this strong community. It was, it was special watching Andrew on the video. Um, Andrew doesn't know this, but I could be having the worst day, uh, whether it's at work or something else going on in my life, when we have a board meeting at Archway Academy. And if I walk through the door and I see him there, um, it always puts a smile on my face. There is something about Andrew that uh, he has this inner beauty and wisdom. Um, his smile is contagious. He lights up a room. And from truly the, the moment I laid eyes on him in Archway Academy, he was someone you look at and you're like, man, this guy has it. And he's, he's going places. Um, so we love you, Andrew, and, and thanks for all of your commitment and service to Archway Academy. Uh, we wanted to say a few more thank yous before we move on with the program. One to our loyal and dedicated board of directors. Uh, the other to our development committee. Thanks for y'all's work in pulling together this event alongside Jamie Edwards, who is our director of community relations and Brad Deason, our Director of Development. Uh, without their efforts, we couldn't raise the money that we're raising here today. It's, it's, it's been truly outstanding. Um, and a special thanks to Jamie. I mean, Jamie had this task of learning how to host a virtual luncheon. Uh, not, not easy as, as it relates to COVID and how to do fundraising and all that goes along with this change. Uh, Jamie, you've done a, a, a world-class job, and we thank you, the whole board, Sasha, the development committee, thank you for your, your service uh, to the school. So, uh, just a quick update on the auction. If you want to get in any final bids, you need to do it now. We're going to close it down at 12.59. So. Absolutely. And thank you to Andrew for sharing his story. Andrew is one of those uh, alumni that I was telling you about that uh, move on to collegiate recovery programs. He picked Texas Tech University, which has one of the longest standing collegiate recovery programs. Uh, one of the other things that's really special and unique about the Archway community is that 94% of the students who graduate go on to a community college or to a university like I talked about with Erica. And Andrew's just a perfect uh, example example again of that incredible work. So it is my pleasure to introduce our last speakers to you guys. These are two parents, Gigi and Woody. Their son Cole graduated a couple of years ago, is now at UT Austin getting his undergraduate degree. And most of you know how terrifying it must be to be the parent of an Archway student. It is hard getting sober young and it is really hard being a parent sort of helplessly, powerlessly watching as your young person is struggling. So we wanted you to be able to hear a little bit of the parent perspective. So enjoy some words from Gigi and Woody. Hi, I'm Woody, this is my wife Gigi, and our son graduated from Archway Academy in 2018. Cole and I, and Jonas, we were best friends. We did everything together. I was their scout leader. We took Taekwondo together. I was their triathlon coach. I was their football coach kayaking, doing something, cycling together. And then he spiraled. It was it's hard to even talk about it right now because you know, I lost my son. And the disrespect, the withdrawal, the wanting to push me away, 
you think, okay, it's just a, a teenager. You have to give him space. And then when you find out what it's, what's going on, it's just, uh, wow. You're at a loss. You, you're, you're in pain for him. I remember feeling concerned about Cole's behavior probably during his ninth grade year. And I got emails from his teachers expressing his bizarre behavior and his inconsistent um, interest in school and his grades were dropping. You go through a grief and a hopelessness and you look for anything. You do anything for your child. You literally, you want to take his place in the recovery journey. Um, and then you start looking for answers, solutions, a way to get back up. Unfortunately, the community treats this with a stigma and there's a shame attached to it. I didn't know what to do. Um, immediately you go into fix it mode. The first time I met the Archway staff was probably at the teacher orientation night and that was an amazing night for me just because I had so much anxiety about where my son would be going, his new journey on his recovery. During the time that he was with Archway, I have seen growth where he overcame challenges to where he was able to speak up even when it was difficult. And we cried together, we listened to each other, we came to a better understanding, and we just learned a new, new way to just really love, truly love each other and support each other. I say that there's not like a perfect recipe to recovery. I think everybody has their own journey that they have to discover and move forward. I think that the um, just admitting that we need help, you know, and that we're powerless and that we need help is the first direction in the right direction. Cole's graduation was a dream come true. I, it was a day of just so much excitement and I was just so proud of him because, you know, he set the goals for himself. And here he is coming down, ringing the bell and goofing around and having fun top of his class. It was just, my son's back. And the people that surrounded him, the teachers, that every day an email or, or a text message or a phone call or a visit or something, they became our community. And there they are, the reason for his success, right there celebrating with him. It was an amazing day. It's not the one big change. It's the little things that changed throughout the year. And then when we look back, it's like, wow, we've really moved in the right direction. Thank you, Zachary, for that touching video. Um, I have the final task of asking for donations to Archway Academy. I've done this one other time over the last nine years. It was about five years ago. And when I did it, we had just received word that a Archway Academy student uh, that actually was attending Archway at the time had committed suicide. Um, it was a really challenging time for us to go up on stage and talk about uh, Archway Academy and what had just transpired. Uh, I had written a, a long speech, I memorized it, and thought I could use some of that information today. Um, you know, just to be more prepared. And I was like, you know, what is, do something different. Like what, what has changed in your life since then? And uh, this, is, this is what has changed in my life. So I came at it from not being a parent. So this is my son, Wynn, he's two years old. And this is my daughter, Walsh. And here they are with dad wishing me a happy birthday. And I keep this, uh, I keep this, in my home office and it makes me very happy every day to see. Um, Walsh and Wynn are predisposed to uh, alcoholism and, and drug addiction through my family and uh, through me. Um, and it's scary to think about them being in, in the situation of our students at Archway Academy. Uh, we were having an Archway Academy board meeting and uh, a board member suggested that we go see uh, a Beautiful Boy, uh, a book about David, uh, 
well, there's a movie and a book about uh, David uh, Chef and uh, his son Nick. Uh, and Nick is in active recovery currently, but he was addicted to crystal meth. Um, I bought the book. I put it next to my bed two years ago. I read the first few pages and I said, you know, I don't need to do this. Like, I'm not going to torture myself to think about my son, Wynn, or my daughter, Walsh, being an active use. Um, it's too hard. You don't want to believe it's not going to happen to my children. My child's not going to be the one to commit suicide because of their disease. Um, but the reality is it's a real challenge and issue that our adolescents face today. We can't turn a blind eye anymore. Um, I need to read the dang book uh, and not be scared that this situation could happen to me when I know it can. Uh, I love my children more than anything in the world and I would do anything for them. Um, and it's truly, when I took a step back and thought about it, it's, it's, it's why I'll do anything for Archway. Um, we are giving these students and these parents an opportunity to have hope again when they feel so hopeless. Being a student, going through recovery as a teenager, as Jeff alluded to, as I've alluded to, it's, it's got to be bone crushing. To be a parent on the other side of that, having to look at something that you raised and you held in your arm and you're just like, man, my life has forever changed. This is the most beautiful person in my life. And to see them struggle, I can't imagine there's any worse feeling. It's got to be awful. So we have hope. Archway gives hope to both the students and the parents that they can get through it. If you feel inclined, please support the school. This fundraiser is important to our continuing operations. It's been a real challenge this year because of uh, COVID. Um, but yeah, so, so that's it. Uh, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom of my wife and May's heart. We've been truly honored to have hosted um, and shared this event today. So back to Sasha. Thank you so much, John. So we are very, very grateful for your time today. Thank you for joining us for a very unusual Archway Luncheon. We look forward to seeing you hopefully in person next year back at the River Oaks Country Club. Until then, please help us spread the word about Archway Academy. Help us to not be a little hidden gem in the Med Center. Help spread the word through social media, by talking about us with your friends and your family and your neighbors, not being afraid to speak about how addiction can create challenges in our community. Help us spread the message of hope. That's what really we're here and that's what this event is about. Please continue helping us to receive donations by letting friends and family know that we're somewhere that really needs your financial support right now. Don't forget the text to donate STUDENT to 91999. You can donate on our website on this event page. Thank you so much for everything that you do for Archway, for your continued support. Thank you. Have a great day. Hello, I'm Jack Kadnak. I uh, graduated Archway in 2013. Um, I'm currently a software developer for a manufacturing company in Round Rock, Texas. Um, I'm Kaylee Baker. I graduated Archway in 2014. Um, I'm a barista in our Austin, Texas. I uh, also co-founded a nonprofit organization um, that's dedicated to removing the stigma of mental illness through art education and community engagement called What It's Like Project. Um, yeah. We are just really grateful for our experience at Archway. We would not be the people we are today without it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Hannah Milne. I graduated from Archway in 2014. 
I went on to get my bachelor's in social work from the University of Texas at Austin and then went to found my own alternative peer group here in Austin, Texas, which is now merged and is part of the Austin Recovery Network. So now we serve adolescents through adults. You know, before I came to Archway, I never saw my life going this way and I couldn't be happier that it has. I'm so grateful for all the people and the opportunities I received because I went to this high school. Thanks, Archway. Hi, my name is Andrew Smithers. I graduated from Archway in 2014. My sobriety date is January 22nd of 2012. I am currently a mixed media artist and I also work in the recovery field. Um, I owe my life to Archway, so thank you so much. My name's Rocky, uh, I'm an alcoholic. I graduated Archway in 2015. My sobriety date's March uh, 14th of 2014. Um, I'm, I've currently started my own business. Um, I'm also in school, I'm finishing up my senior year. I just wanted to say thank you to Archway for everything that they've done for me and everything that they do for all the other adolescents in recovery. Uh, it has definitely changed my life. Uh, my close friends' lives, and I'm sure it will change many lives to come. Hi, my name is Anna Stevens. I graduated Archway December of 2014. Um, I was actually able to attend Archway on a sliding scale uh, due to really great people who make donations. Um, it made a really big difference in my life. Currently, I'm actually an office manager for a therapeutic office um, in private practice that's ran by my old support staff at Archway. Um, they're really great people. I don't think I would be where I am today if it wasn't for people um, at Archway, like Sasha or Sanborn or people like that. Um, they taught me how to take notes, how to believe in myself. They were actually the first people who told me I could graduate from high school and I could be more than how I was acting. And so I don't know where I'd be without those people. Hey, my name's Estevan Gibson. I was in Archway in 2014, 2015. And what I'm up to is I am a co-founder of a nonprofit named Here We Come, and we are out to transform the education system in America. I thank Archway for everything that I got while, while there. The biggest thing that I got while at Archway is the ability to connect with anybody and everybody and to recognize the humanity in everybody and to love them for that humanity being everything that they are and everything that they're not. And not only love them through it, but to also to offer whatever it is that I can to help them get to the next level in life. Yeah, thank you, Archway. Hi, my name's Sophie. I graduated Archway in 2015, live in Austin now. Um, and I just want to thank Archway for teaching me how important community is. Um, at the beginning of this year in February, eight months ago today, actually, um, I lost my little sister. And the way that that community pulled together and helped me and my family out through that time is something that we'll never forget. Our trade is such a light during terrible and dark times and I love that that community is still there for me even five years after I've graduated. Um, so thank you guys. Hi, my name is Elise. I graduated from Archway in 2014. I graduated from University of Houston about a year ago with a bachelor's degree in business. And I now work as a business analyst in IT. Going to Archway set me on the right foot in the direction of success, and I don't think I would have been as successful without Archway's nurturing environment. Hi, my name is Christian. I graduated Archway in 2017. My sobriety date is 9 13, 2011. Uh, I currently work at Transcend Recovery, and I would just like to thank Archway and Sasha for providing me with the patience that I so badly needed to graduate. My name is Cameron Cano, I'm an alcoholic graduated from Archway in December of 2008. I'm currently an attorney in Austin, Texas. And I just wanna say thank you to Archway Academy for giving me the, the opportunity to grow and to graduate high school, which I never would have done without it. So thank you, Archway.